Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to God. How is my audio? The devil will not will not stop me today. I know he stopped me last time. He tried. He, he did not succeed. He did not succeed. He tried. But today we are ready for him. <laughs> oh, the like je ve vora kali kredin do ru di kie ve ve la babo kwa fafe ile ke bonandi ite fera babo ko shaila. Barate ko fara talande ile rati ko venande ve vi lu kwa fala vare la ikutu e ve ve li de ru te feni mo gwa vai li inke te fena inde vena ikutu ve ve she voru usu kaka fe fe la barota kaba la tua kame. Niando veveni gandi de de ve 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 ski ve ve lura kabe ebreki te no mu kabava la babora kwa fe na lako fe fe ni daruke kwa kapa kwa katafanda karute kafini ya katana pambo le fe na iki fe no rude ve ve ne mungu iki ti fe la barate ndo uja kavi vi ne ve ve lu uakabe paruta kapala wakapa iti venom barate le mene venera papu kwa fala paratu wakanda vandi vias ije kefalu irate no maka vevena mbambrut kelo manga dere kefela aiko vande meronda skavai ke pelunde ili babane e barote aha abalantonda sapai balue kia de berote kala babalo kwame e barote na monga shakavai la balato wala var Rata la makwa tala vanta ratendo umbe kwe vina veru ai jiate nembonga ishkapa wala pa eskomba abramba latomba alombamba ya su su kutumba ekombambe vebe la baruke tene mera tena mo kwa gabatana ada barate ko venengwa katene ndie ketete ereketete tene mangie teno obamba bambo kombamba na sana Abale ke telendo re ke teni andi iande iande beratai 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 ratu geve giga pate nura patwa latwa katwa ratwa kapwa apwa katano kwa tambia ka iandi ke ate te toro te ke pana e palo ke pana bre ke telema katwa the devil is not in control baru ngu ke be mane ino komba sai 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 la tani elekete de rute me mama abamba mbamba abamba mbade eleke sele ruge luge te rume kamete kamete nunga pai ketelo eko te mamba bana the devil is not in control God is in control. Sai te koma apom bataka pokotom beroto kome na kataya nango te ke fine e ando kome ma every kitine me keteno ombre keteda katena ngia go kambane eleko rute ke bavana mo kapana the devil is not in control. I don't know what lie he has he has he has proposed to you. I don't know what lie he has made you believe about your life. He maybe he made you think that you are nobody. Maybe he made you believe that you are a failure. I want you to announce to the devil that he came late. He came late. He came late because in God you are already a finished project. And if you peep into the end, you won. Mm, the lie of the devil is only to dissuade you the lies of the devil is just to take you off path because as you walk with god you will tread the path that has already been finished i said that your path has been finished i said that your destiny is a concluded case in god the devil lies to dissuade you but tonight you will mount up with wings like the eagles you will run and not be weary you will walk and not faint because you will drink the water that is drink indeed from the fountain of life life whence come at your help for a hey, sakatom bakatom Opana. the devil is not in control the devil is not in control the devil is not 
in control. I don't know, there's just this body to 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 took my two fingers in his eyes tonight. I want to twist his ear and let you know that he's not in control. Jesus is in control. <laughs> God is in control, not the devil. Even though he raises 10,000 devils or a million devils, a thousand will fall at my right, 10,000 on my side, none shall come near me. I'm the abode of God. God. I'm his tabanko. I'm his dwelling place. Ah. <laughs> okay, we can start the meeting now. There's still somebody listening, one person that somewhere in your heart you are afraid that the lie of the devil that was uh, that was in the life of your mother while growing up, you saw several traces of weaknesses in your mother, and you have seen it in other women in your family. I say it is a lie, it's a lie. That's not what God has said about you. For you are a mighty intercessor, a weapon of war in my hands, and with thee will I subdue kingdoms, with thee will I subdue nations. That that weakness you saw in your mother's life no 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 it ends there the pit that has been dug by the devil and his minions they will fall into it and you have been destined for greatness you will not fall says the lord a lady here listening to me you are a kd you have been afraid that you will end up with unwanted pregnancy because you have seen that pattern around your family I want to announce to you that God says, just walk with him, walk with him, walk with him, walk with him, walk with him. And that will not be your case. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are welcome to the school of prophets. Oh, thank you. The glory of God is so, so tangible. I tell you that anything can happen in tonight's meeting. Anything can happen. Anything can happen anything can happen once again you're welcome to the school of prophets <laughs> okay thank you so much Ebuka. god bless you real good thank you sonia sonia you're such a blessing to my life i pray for you every day every single day that god the god that called me and that has given himself to this work because it is his work that god will surprise you greatly in your life in your family's life thank you so much chi duziem madu thank you so much i mean we met of recent <clears throat> but you have been a very faithful um should i use the word disciple you've been a very faithful follower let me use that word follower right god bless you so much so 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 much thank you princess princess god will reward your consistency yeah that's how you same thing with oloa yemi we met recently and you've been very consistent god bless you victoria my personal person all right it's becoming a lot and I, I need us to go into the message of tonight lillian oh yeah lillian hi from twitter <laughs> funny how i saved your number yeah welcome here lillian <coughs> excuse me you are all welcome. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. Kelechi, thank you so much. Thank you, every single person. Hey, this is how is the baby now? Uh, the baby that came by prophecy. <laughs> How's the baby? How's the baby doing? How's the baby doing? How's the baby doing? Thank you, Holy Ghost. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Baby is very well. All right, so let us proceed. Once again, you are welcome to the School of Prophets. So it's, we have a long business to do. Is that, is that the word? We have a long journey to take. <laughs> How is the quality of my audio? <clears throat> is it better than previous times? Is it better than previous times? A lot has been invested into making this audio perfect so that 
your not just your ear but your your spirit man <laughs> all right thank you so much i see you sasha go i see you sabasi these are two forces two pillars in my life and in the, in the work burning hearts god bless you guys let's go straight into the business of today lord we thank you and we give you great praise and we give you great glory thank you because Thank you because you have called this procession and we ask that you breathe upon us tonight. We ask that you cause your face to shine upon us. Thank you because your hand rests mightily upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, I do not go in my name. I go in your name because you have sent me. And let the result, let the testimony of them that you have sent be replicated in the life of everyone who is here now everyone who has decided to sacrifice food sleep movie leash your pleasure to come and hear your word let your name be glorified in their lives give them a testimony give them a miracle but more, much much more importantly reveal yourself unto them in greater measures in the name of of jesus christ amen i titled this the school of prophets it's not because i'm only expecting that prophets will be here i mean people who are called into the office of the prophet like my humble self that's not the aim this meeting is for every believer and i'll explain in a bit tonight is going to actually is actually going to be more of a teaching night and um the business that we have to do today cannot be exhausted in a single teaching it's actually a series that has begun and over the course of the week from um as we continue our burning hour from tomorrow which is the daily oh okay which is the daily prayer meeting that we have in um on this group here the prayer leaders and facilitators will be re um emphasizing some of the things that i will be teaching tonight and just preparing us for the subsequent teachings <clears throat> you know in the book of acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says that they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine in the breaking of bread in fellowship and in prayers i want to take the first factor of the equation called continuing and that is called the apostles doctrine <laughs> you know in the book of acts 1 and verse 1 it says the former treatises i write on treatise i write unto you all theologians of all that jesus began both to do and to teach both to do and teach you see the summary the life and teachings of jesus form the basic foundation of doctrine in other words a, a good question to ask <clears throat> excuse me a good question to ask concerning um something that has to do with your christian faith is number one did jesus teach it number two did jesus do it all right and let me give you a very, a very classical example. Let me give a very classical example. When it comes to the working of miracles, right, or the um, demonstration of the gifts of healings, you know, meanwhile, there's, there are a couple of teachings that while I've been in prayer the last couple of days, the Lord has instructed me to begin to have for you guys. One of them is called stewarding, stewarding the power of God. Another one is titled Caris. <laughs> <laughs> my friend my very special let me let's leave that the other one is titled caris and in these two teachings you are going to be equipped with uh, with the holy ghost <laughs> you're going to be equipped with the holy ghost to number one understand how uh, the power of god can be or rather the work the working the inner working of god's power within you within your vessel right as a believer and uh, the, the the divine partnership that god seeks to achieve in the face of the earth with you in the dispensing of his power and in the teaching titled caris we're going to understand that word and um, how that that is the that is where the that is what the word charisma in the greek is what derives the word carries all right i'm going to explain that and that just has to do with the um the what do i call this now the 
I don't want to just use the word power. All right. Let me, let's call it the charismatic ministry of the believer. The charismatic ministry of the believer. The, the, the problem is that many times, or in, in a lot of Christian circles, and I'm saying this, you know, with as much honor for everyone involved as possible, we are mainly taught all that God, how to receive all that God has given unto us. And actually, even in being taught how to receive all that God has given unto us, the focus has mainly been, should I say, delineated to material blessings. How many of you agree with that? That it, it's heavily emphasized more, you know, that God can give you a house, give you a car, give you a job, give you a breakthrough in your business, give you, you know, we are more used to only hearing that kind of message that is about what god can give you but the fact is that even in learning to understand what god can give you <clears throat> there is a, a deeper understanding you need to have about what god has given you that is not that is intangible because many times the tangible result you will see in your believer the materialistic result you will you will see in your life as a believer sorry is it's is largely tied to your apprehension of that which is intangible because when god sought to bless man the first thing that god gave man was not a breakthrough but his spirit and in understanding that now you have received the spirit of god you you will need to do a study <laughs> because the word of god is the only platform is the only foundation by which we can receive accurate tutelage of what is now obtainable in our life you know post reception of the holy ghost and the believer received the holy ghost upon salvation and that is not um, a statement that is just made randomly we we see from the book of ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 it says in whom um, you believed after that you heard the gospel of your salvation let me read this quickly okay ephesians 1 of verse 13 it said in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise listen he said after that you believed after you believed when you believed the gospel what happened next is that you were immediately sealed with the holy spirit of promise listen the word of god is should i use the word truer more accurate than your experience the word of god is more is more reliable than your environment than your upbringing than your um what has been obtainable in your life or in your family's lineage the word of god must be trusted above all else listen heaven and earth will pass away but the word of god will remain god's word is his bond you see it is impossible for god to lie uh, this teaching is taking a different turn i don't want to spend too much time on this matter but just before I go into the teaching of tonight, uh, let me let me let, let me lay a bit of a foundation. Turn your Bible with me to the book of uh, that's the book of Second Timothy, chapter three. Yeah, the, to the book of Second Timothy, chapter three. If you don't have your Bibles there with you now, I will just read for the sake of time. Second Timothy chapter 3, I would read from verse 16. It says, All scripture, this is KJV. Second Timothy 3 and verse 16 says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Thank you, Victoria. That the man of God may be perfectly, may be perfect, thoroughly punished unto all good works i want to say this without without any assumption that when he uses the word here man of god he's not just referring to a person that has a call all right it's paul's way of writing it's not just referring to a pastor neither is he only referring to a male believer all right because you see the word man of god i, I need you to understand that much more than being male the word man actually uh, is is the word Adam? Is it, most of it more often than not? It refers to mankind, unless in the teaching we see that there is a specific emphasis to the male gender. And an, an example is in the book of um, 
is that let me see that's first timothy chapter two let me turn quickly first timothy chapter two yeah you see something very clearly uh let's look at first timothy chapter two from verse four from verse three it says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god our savior who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth now you see the word men there that is obviously not referring to a male gender because god died for all you see paul was speaking into his letter in, the, in his letter to the corinthians says that he died for all that they which live might henceforth live no longer unto themselves but unto he that what gave himself for all now that is proof that look at john 3 16 again for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever it seems like i'm making i'm emphasizing on something that is obvious the word of god actually addresses every single thing and it's important to not assume anything if it can be proven and understood from the bible because somebody can go ahead and read follow me i came to teach tonight <laughs> It is doctrine that makes the disciple. Somebody can go and look at that scripture I quoted in um, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and um, verse 17 and say that the man of God there is talking about only a male preacher. If you if you have been if you have followed me for the last couple of years, I've taught this for at least four to five years in almost all my meetings where we are looking at a core Bible subject. That the man of God may be perfectly thoroughly furnished. It's not just talking about a male. Because now we've looked at it again in the book of First Timothy 2 and verse 4. It says, Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. That's obviously referring to Jesus because in his incarnation he was he was male. All right. You will now see again in verse 8 see again in verse 8 of same first timothy chapter 2 it says i will therefore that men pray everywhere um, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel so in this case we can see that he's now referring to gender not just uh adam not just mankind both but gender so victoria when you're posting the scriptures try to remove the link at the bottom so that it doesn't keep um it doesn't keep showing the bible logo all right it just makes the chat very bulky to read all right just try to remove the link under and then it will not show thank you so much all right i'll just proceed verse eight and nine is a clear case of gender now he said i will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath, without without wrath and, and doubting i don't have time i would have explained this his letter and why he was saying that men in particular should pray he was not in the, I, mean, I mean in terms of the gender he was not just saying that only the male should um should pray but there was a particular reason why he was talking about men and i don't have time to start it without um you know going through the bible to help you understand and all of that and and but what will help you is that the next the immediate verse following he referred to female he said in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel so he was ex he was trying to expose and and uh, speak to a deficiency amongst the men in that you know that where he was writing to concerning um this, this was this was a timothy that the men there was a deficiency in their prayer life he said i will i mean it is my intention it is my prayer in my endless desire to see um men praying everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath all right and doubting because it was a common culture among the men of this time you know when you say wrath having to do with like fighting showing who is boss you know and all of that so without wrath and doubting and in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamed facedness and sobriety not with braiding hair or gold or pearls or costly array this is not this is a very this verse needs to be explained but not today I'm just trying to lay a bit of a foundation all right so back to my scripture that's that is kicking this teaching off it says that the man of god or rather from verse 16 again it says all scripture all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and another translation says all scripture is god breathed is breathed by god all scripture is inspired by god all scripture is inspired by god you know somebody once said that 
and in, in the world in the bible you in the bible you see the devil there as well so are we saying that god is saying that we should acknowledge or worship the devil no you see that there are stories in the word of god but the stories are not the doctrine the teachings of christ and his disciples are the doctrine i i, I really hope you are with me in the word of god there is doctrine there are stories and the stories are to learn are to are, are for us to learn from the doctrine are for us to be instructed let me not take too much time on this i'm just trying to lay a very important frame, premise so now what does doctrine do verse 16 and 17 tells us what the teaching of the bible when proper teaching you know uh, when you are exposed to proper teaching a couple of things happen in your life and we can trust the bible to tell us what these things are all right a couple of things happen number one it says in, in the profit of scripture or rather the profit of doctrine which is derived from scripture listen this is this is even this is really important for us to even note notes it says and I, I want to say this because of the sake of i know i have a couple of new friends here who have not been under my teaching in 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 forever you just joined our group and you're highly welcome right <clears throat> let me say this quickly the first statement here all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine let me say this that the bible should and by every means be your final authority for doctrine and doctrine is is the, the, the word doctrine is didache it refers to a system of truth that means the word of God is the only God approved and final authority by which we should get our lifestyle, our faith from, our conduct, okay? Our, our understanding and perception of life must come from doctrine. And doctrine is derived from scripture because the profit of scripture is doctrine. And what does that do? Number one, it gives us reproof, gives us correction and gives us instruction in righteousness teaches us the ways of righteousness how to conduct ourselves in step with righteousness it touches every critical aspect of the human's life and so we are not just born we're not just born again so that we can you know be um a part of the religious sect called the body of christ or called the church of god or called christianity no much more than that we have a code of conduct by which we must conduct ourselves our lives in accordance to an ancient pattern and this is revealed in the word of god when i when i use the word ancient i don't mean um archaic no i mean that it is as old as eva which is god himself he is an ageless being <laughs> you see God did not meet the beginning. The beginning actually met God. Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created. And also, we have a culture of response in the burning hearts. When you are when you are being taught the word of God and you learn something or something hits you, you respond. You say glory to God. You say yes, Mao, yes, sir, who is teaching. As long as you are learning something, you respond in the chat box. Because for the sake of the recording, we do not um allow you to unmute while. Um, someone is teaching all right just so that the recording can be smooth because it's going to be shared on youtube and all our platforms all right but when the word of god is being taught you respond in the chat box okay so i'm sure i'm not i'm not i'm not, I'm not talking to aliens i'm not talking to dead people you are all alive and well and active all right all right all right thank you so much sandra the beginning met god the 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 god did not meet the beginning genesis 1 verse 1 says in the beginning god created that means the commencement of creation is what marks the beginning of time in other words when god chose to quote and unquote come out of his comfort zone and extend the beauty the splendor the creativity the creation the enormity of glory and splendor that was trapped in him called god when he decided to extend that 
into a realm that is tangible that is when the um that which is what we call creation that is when the, the beginning of time was marked because the very fact that god was now bringing the factor of tangibility into the equation time began to count before then there is what we were we are only aware we are mostly only aware of the eternal future that even after this um civilization is over there will be the new jerusalem the new earth that we will continue the civilization now solely and primarily spearheaded by the lordship of christ but there is something called the eternal past where was god before he did be decided to create <laughs> look at the bible says the heaven is my home he said all these things my hands have made i mean before god decided to create heaven i mean the realm called heaven where was he have you asked yourself that question this is not a, this is not this is not god is not a quantifiable being this is not in a bit to confuse you i just i just want you to think where was he but let's leave that what i'm trying to let you know is that the one that has giving us the way that we should conduct ourselves as believers is an ageless and a timeless being and everything about him is ageless his wisdom is ageless his his glory is timeless and so he has given us and he has inspired the scriptures and the product of scripture is doctrine and on the account of doctrine the way of life of the believer has already been settled we are not called to be creative we must find out what is written on the script and conduct ourselves in line with that ancient philosophy called doctrine it is given by god it is given by god it is given by god when he says men ought always to pray that is an ancient if there is a reason why the all wise god says you should always pray it is ancient and it is you can bank on it you can put your life on it because the one eh, that inspired doctrine is an is a timeless being you you are subject to time you have a beginning you will have an end in time all right though he has made you in his image there is a timelessness you will never die your body might only sleep in this realm for a moment but the bible says in colossians 3 and verse 4 that when christ who is our life shall appear we shall also appear with him hallelujah hallelujah we shall also appear with him we shall appear with him in the technology of creation eternality has been has been advertised i mean i mean having a time timelessness has been advertised to humanity and how we tap into timelessness is by the redemption by coming is by salvation because the, the, the man that god created in genesis 2 and verse 1 and verse um you know um, um verse um, 27 and then 2 and verse 7 that man was not designed to die mm. you know god spoke to him and said in the day you eat of this fruit you shall surely die that means before you you ate of the fruit death was not a reality come on death was not a reality before you ate of this fruit and the word you shall surely die is in the hebrew translated in dying you shall die that means you will kickstart a process called death no wonder paul was speaking in romans and said by one man came sin and through sin came death no wonder he said it like that the eternality was always the plan of god timelessness because the only way you can have fellowship with the timeless being is if he has given you his nature and on the account of that nature you can now have fellowship with him john was speaking in first john one he says for our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ that's where we that's who we truly have fellowship with and you can listen you cannot have fellowship with a cat because you do not have the life of a cat you cannot have fellowship with a dog no matter how much you you say you love the dog is your best friend and all of that because you don't have the life of a dog there are some things that dog will do that you you will never understand no matter how many years you have had that dog for no matter how many books you have studied on dogs there are some they, one day the dog will colo you will not know the reason behind it and you might be scared you might be wondering you you don't know because you don't have the life of a dog you don't have the life of a dog 
you, a mosquito is coming to suck your blood in the mosquito's mind it is right in your mind for killing the mosquito for that sucking your blood the way you slap yourself in the night you you, you too you are right you can never have fellowship with that mosquito because you do not have the life of the mosquito but you have the life of god therefore you can have fellowship with god and god has chosen to make you his tabernacle that means he can he can communicate his feelings to you he can communicate his mind to you the bible says we have the mind of christ and having say he says having the mind of christ does not mean that you have the quote unquote the mind being the first process of christ alone but you have the mind it means that you have the 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 the, 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 the way christ thinks has been embedded into your system and so you can reason with him on the same frequency you can reason together with god because you have his life <laughs> because you have his life because you have his life someone who is listening with me say in the comment section i have the life of god listen that is the basis of fellowship the basis of having fellowship with god is that you have the life of god in you you have his life you have his life you have the life of god <laughs> this is very important it's a very important foundation i'm trying to lay for you the, 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 the base of fellowship is life. Victoria, I know you are the one taking excerpts. Please don't miss that. The basis of fellowship is life. He says, For who knoweth the thoughts of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him? He says, But we have the mind of Christ. It means that we have the thought process. We can tap into the thoughts of God and we can reason with him. Not because of we are so special, but because he has been he has invested himself in us, and on the account of having his life and having his spirit within you, you can now have fellowship with him, you can have koinonia with him <laughs> in your sleep while you are sleeping. He can open up stuff and show you things when you wake up and maybe you're about to go somewhere, he can just move within your vessel, and you know you're not meant to leave where you are stay there sometimes when you are praying something begins to move inside of you no other person can understand this in fact no other person knows that there is something happening inside of you it is called the movement of the inner life it's fellowship hey sometimes maybe you see that you hear like i heard of recent <laughs> and i knew that somebody took my name to a white garment mm. i never prayed about it one day when i heard it and i saw it that's it. i'm like so what i'm doing is actually touching the devil i, I didn't know <laughs> i thought i was just one random boy just trying to follow god i didn't know that people wanted me dead when i heard that they took my name to the white garment the day i wanted to pray about it I looked in the spirit and I saw the one seated in heaven. He was laughing. I never prayed about it. <laughs> and I will never pray about it. Never. Never. <laughs> oh! Zuleke Farakiti Andi Kepola Pana. I was I had a meeting one day, a physical meeting, and then there was a lady close to me that was taken up by a devil. And this lady began to manifest, and there were a lot of other ushers around her, you know, putting their hands on her belly, trying to cast out the devil. And sorry, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah, putting hand on her belly. I remember that very well. And I, I just walked up to them, and I said, "What are you guys doing? You have been here for five minutes, struggling. It's not working." <laughs> and I said, "Wait," and I, I held the lady's hand, struggling and struggling. And I saw that God was not even so. What's the word now? So he got to come. I just said, yeah. I said, S -s 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 -s. and the lady just slept. And as she slept, the demon left her. I did not shout in the name of Jesus. Come out, come out, come out. Come. There are days that we shout like that. We are excited that we are, we are just trying to make a fool of the devil because that's what he is. There are other days that we let him know that he's no match for God. Just tell him. She slept and the devils left her. <laughs> and it's not because I'm one special person. It's just that when I checked, that life 
I have the way the life was responding that day was not to shout, come out, come out, and all of that. The life was responding with authority. That I that these, these demons they cannot even stand you because God dwells inside of you. So you just walk and come on, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> fellowship with god i did that one as a believer not as a prophet or as anything as a believer and so i'm seeking to lay a foundation for you tonight to understand that all that we'll be looking at is the, the, the they are only possible because we have the life of god in us wherever wherever you are don't type this time just say say it loud I have the life of God in me. I am the temple of the living God. <laughs> we'll say it five times. The, 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 as I said it now, the life in me moved. And when I inquired in a split second, it's a timeless realm. He told me that as we say that in five, five times, there is a consciousness that will break out into some of you's mind and spirit. And suddenly by tomorrow, you will wake up in another man. So we're going to say it five times. Say, I have the life of God in me. And I am the don't type it or just say it. Don't type, just say, it. and I am the temple of the living God. I have the life of God in me. <laughs> and I am the temple of the living God. Three more times. I have the life of God in me. Hey, hey. And I'm the temple of the living God. Go, I'm living God. I have the life of God in me. And I'm the temple of the living God. I have the life of God in me and I am the temple of the living God. All right, as you, be, as you began to speak, you see in, the, in some of you, there are some things that, have, that you, what, you, in your own words, you call it generational cause. But I saw those things, strongholds in your mind by the devil. I saw them breaking. 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 And even as I speak now, one of you, the power of God is coming so strong upon you. Coming so strong. Coming so strong. Coming so strong. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. It's coming strong upon you. Ah. Kureke fene kawa. Paiki tefana. Paparaki fene aso. Zuge va iki tike paratika lo kapani. Periki tifike andisi. Aisi ki didi inande. Periku tu ungwaka papana. The power of God is coming so strong, so strong, so strong, so strong upon you. And that lie of the devil in your life, that lie of the devil in your family, that lie of the devil in your business, that lie of the devil, that lie of the devil is breaking even now, is breaking even now, is breaking even now. And every tree that my heavenly father has not planted every tree that my heavenly father has not planted in the name that is above every other name we command that tree to be uprooted now we command that tree to be uprooted now in the name of jesus amen <laughs> now let me start the teaching of tonight oh it's 10 o'clock or should i stop are you guys tired? Should we continue another day? <laughs> Let me know. Should we continue on that day? Or should I should I stop? Or should I go ahead? Oh, yeah, na 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 na. I heard the angels sing. Yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, 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 na 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 na. Ah, yeah, na 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 na. Yeah, 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 na 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 na. Ah uh, yeah. Na 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 na. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. 
I'll premise my teaching and thoughts upon the scripture in Joel 2 and verse 28. Victor, I give us that scripture quickly. Joel 2 28. Joel 2 28. Let's quickly review a prophecy. A prophecy that was given about the last days. Ah, yeah. Woo, we need to start having physical meetings soon. And when we start it, you will know why I just made this statement. <laughs> Some of you will have experiences physically. You will see Jesus walking among men. Oh God. You will see him and his angels walking. Not in a vision. <laughs> so then it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Your young men shall see visions. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And we are already in afterward. <laughs> we are in that time because you see the day in the day of the identification which was the day where the holy ghost came down on the, in the upper room and which was a sign that jesus had now been glorified in the exhortation that peter began to give in the book of acts chapter 2 he said this jesus whom you crucified has now been henceforth crowned lord and christ and he began to explain that in order, because he has been crowned Lord and Christ, a prophecy was given in the book of Psalms 110, uh, where he said that, and the Lord shall send forth the rod of my when the, and the Lord said, I will send forth the rod of my strength from out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies, the rod of my strength, being the Holy Ghost. He said, I will send out the rod of my strength from out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. He began to explain that because Jesus has now been coronated Lord and Christ. Christ, which was his prophetic destiny. I don't have time to explain that. When we look at Christ, I will explain what I mean by that. And how that the incarnation afforded the need for time, the need for the time to take its course, and in order for him to ascend the throne of the Christ, which is the administrator of the purposes of God, there had to be met. The demands of divine justice had to be met. A long, an, an age-long battle was, was, um, was fought in the realm of the spirit for that throne you know that was the throne that the devil um, looked upon and desired in the book of isaiah chapter 14. i don't have time to go into that where he's uh, he said how about thou falling oh lucifer sorry son of the morning how art thou caught for thou said in thine heart i will exalt my throne above the stars of god and i will be like the most high i will be like the most high he saw the throne of christ it was advertised in zion it was it seemed like it was vacant and uh, it was there because there was an aberration in 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 in, the, in creation man had fallen and so in order for man to be restored a man had to come that had not partaken of the sin of adam which we call original sin which theologians call rather original sin a man that had not partaken of that form of the deprivation and you know the, the uh what's the word now and um deviation from the blueprints of creation had to come upon the scene that would be be the pioneer of a new civilization the bible calls him the last adam or the second adam you know the second kind of mankind. He was going to pioneer a kind of mankind that had not partaken of that sin. And by the account of his ministry before men, he will be able to con concoct a sacrifice that can bring men into that same reality. And he had to die, be buried, and you know, defeat hell, and then ascend far above the heavens in order for that to happen. I don't have time but that throne was was desired if you study carefully in the book of colossians you would see paul speaking and said that you know that all things were made by him and for him and that's talking about christ the office of the christ the administrator of the purposes of god there is nothing that god does or god will do that will not be overseen by that office if god will save men 
the office of the Christ will have to be put set in motion. If God will give his spirit to men, the office of the Christ will have to be set, will have to put that in motion. If God will give gifts of men to men, <laughs> the office of the Christ will have to set that in motion. All things were made by him and for him. The devil desired to sit upon that throne and he had spit into the realm and had seen that it was the prophetic destiny of Jesus to ascend that throne, being God, the incarnate as man. And so he said, if you bow before me, I will give you all the nations of the world. He was trying to advertise a limited edition of the prophetic destiny of Jesus to him, saying that if you would worship me, meaning that because whoever you worship exercises authority over you, and whatever you worship exercises authority over you and it, it is it is not just a philosophical statement that sounds good in motivational speech it is the rule of life and the and the code of the realm of the spirit whatever you worship it becomes your lord whatever you worship becomes your lord if you worship money mammon will become your lord if you worship sex to become your lord if you worship movies you become your lord whatever you worship becomes your lord in that realm because whereas what we see here are activities in the body in that realm activities are powered by spirits you might see a sickness in that realm that sickness most often than not i mean there is a medical explanation and you know um let's let's, let's leave that more often than not that sickness is powered by a spirit of infirmity <laughs> when you see when you see a person that is coming into massive wealth massive wealth massive wealth and this person is obviously um deviates and flouts the laws of god in his or her daily living it is more often than not and most likely that wealth is powered by a spirit i'm not trying to make you become um paranoid about everything that you see happening but i want you to know that the earth is primarily spiritual and the things that you see they, they don't come from the things that are seen but from the things which are which are unseen that the visible realm was vomited by the invisible realm <laughs> and everything that you see is a product of what has happened in that realm no wonder jesus said you shall whatever you bind on it shall be bound in heaven because if you bind it on earth and it's not bound in heaven it will happen again but if you bind it on earth and by the authority that jesus has given unto you that thing is bound in heaven then it will not happen anymore again and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven so if you lose it on earth and it's not loosed in the realm of the spirit it will happen again but now by the authority of christ you can lose something here and in that realm of the spirit that thing is loosed and god honors your word in heaven it means that that thing you have loosed will never be unloosed what you what you whatsoever form of operation you perform and that was jesus speaking to peter anyway you see but i'm already deviating off my message so let me come back let me come back we saw a prophecy that was given and that prophecy says that it shall come to pass in the last days and that was that was that was i was i was actually on a journey to explain to you that because christ jesus had been coronated christ he became the administrator of the will and the purposes of god in fact what we can call the eternal purpose of god is revealed in the book of Ephesians chapter one you read from verse nine and ten that god wants to gather in one in, 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 in god god wants to gather as one all things in christ and the, the eternal purpose of God is that everything becomes subject to Christ. Ephesians 1, 9 and 10. You don't have to post it, Victoria. That everything becomes subject to Christ. To Christ. And when you hear the word Christ, the, the emphasis is on the office. On the office. The office of the Christ. You know, we have offices in the realm of the Spirit. <laughs> have you not read in the book of um, Luke, when the angel appeared to Zechariah, and then he began to doubt concerning the birth of his son. He said, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of, of God. That's my office. That's where, that's where, that's where I'm positioned. Whereas an office in the in the physical is it refers to a geographical location, which is the seat of your which, which is where people come to meet you and do business with you. But in the realm of the spirit, an office is a seat of administration. It's where it's, 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 it means that if you have an office in that realm, it gives you authority to do certain kinds of business in this realm. So the office of an apostle gives a human being the grace to go to a territory, subdue that territory, raise men that can uphold the heritage of Christ in that territory and go to another territory and replicate the exact same thing. Someone like he was speaking from that office he said the same thing i committed unto you commit thou unto faithful men who are able to teach others also an apostle has a grace for a transgenerational effect 
Are you following me? The day that the day that I teach about gifts of men, I will explain the fivefold offices for you carefully, and I will explain the signs that scriptures prove provide that we can use to identify. Okay, is there an office in operation here? Is this the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, or the teacher? And then if you would also let you know the signs to look at in your life to know if there is an office that you have been assigned to and what that office is nonetheless every believer is called to ministry because we are sent to minister as ministers of the new covenant to preach the word of reconciliation in the name of jesus the school of prophets is a, an initiative of the holy ghost i'm privileged to teach you guys take you guys on this journey you know uh the next time we do this teaching i'll take you back into the book of first second samuel we'll look at where that there was an actual school of prophets it's not just a, a name that sounds good you know that sounds um that sounds cool in christendom there was an actual school all right i don't have time to do that today but what i want to do today is to let you know that you see the notes i have is actually can only be exhausted in two weeks of constant teaching but we'll see what the lord will help you this teaching should end on or before 11 p.m tonight because we will teach a bit and then we'll pray and see what the lord has for us i want to premise this teaching by saying that the believer has the capacity of revelation the believer has the capacity of revelation all right i'm going to read quickly from the book of first corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 to 14 you see i'm starting this way because when you hear the word prophetic 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 we need to know what exactly the word prophetic means and because you know the, the the prophet the office of the prophet is is commonplace especially in africa we are we are so used to calling somebody prophet just because they can see a vision it's no it's not just about seeing visions in fact seeing visions is the least operation is the least form of operation of the office of a prophet it's not just about, every believer can see vision so what that makes our office different what makes our office special as it were it's not, not just about seeing visions right but you know the first thing i said that every believer can and should see visions why is that capacity installed within the believer i'm going about to show you in the word of god when you hear the word prophetic it has to do with revelation now or revelatory 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 when you hear the word prophetic it means revelatory it means prophetic is um, an adjective that is used to design that is used to describe an operation that is revelatory in nature all right that is on that that unveils something that demystifies something that predicts not let me know is what predicts that um forecasts something if that is forensic in operation when you say this, this guy is prophetical it means that the things he does the way he teaches is proof that there is a realm beyond this realm okay and it's not just proof but can um make an intangible reality tangible before men prophetic and every believer can do that kind of operation i'll show you why none of my thoughts are self-inspired inspired by the word of god so I'm going to read quickly from the book of 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 10 to 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. You are welcome to church, oh. <laughs> verse 10 to 14. It says, but God, no, let me go, let me let me start from verse 9. It says, 1 Corinthians 2, says, but I, but as it is written, I hath not seen, but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god hath prepared for them that love him look at verse 10 but he has revealed he hath revealed them unto us by his spirit let me come again verse 10 but god hath revealed them unto us by his spirit what is them verse 9 but as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. The sense said, but God has revealed them unto us. Who are the us? Believers. By his spirit. 
for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of god the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of god before i go back to that verse 10 let me just finish my scripture reading verse 11 says for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god verse 12 says now we have received not the spirit of this world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god verse 13 says which things also we speak not with the words with man's wisdom teach it but which the holy ghost teach it comparing spiritual things with the spiritual look at verse 14 but the natural man receives not doesn't but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned verse 15 says i'll just read verse 15 and 16 quickly verse 15 says but he that is spiritual judge all things yet he himself is judged of no man verse 16 says but for who hath known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ let me go back quickly to verse 10 it says but god has revealed things in verse 9 but god has revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searched all things yea the deep things of god <laughs> you know in um my hundred level i had just gotten into a, my university before i came into that university i was i used to be a cult boy yeah and um <laughs> if you've known me for long you've known this it's not as if this is me coming out to share my story no anybody that has known me knows this story it's an old now old now old, old, old gist you know i used to be a cult boy and um it used to be a lot of things actually so it's just just to save time and so i was supposed to be expelled and arrested from my previous university but my parents came to withdraw me from and some of you are like oh, oh my god shit wow calm down you'll be all right <laughs> so uh you know my parents came to withdraw me just before that thing happened and i was now in the house and i was just there i was just there still looking for ways to go about my fraternity glory <laughs> so uh one of those days i decided to go back to go and travel to see my brother <laughs> grace changes everything my brother for it i decided to travel to go and see my brother in um oweri emo state please don't be distracted i'm getting somewhere you'll understand the scripture now <laughs> i traveled to go and see my brother in oweri and when I went to see him, they were all going for a program in their lodge. I'm like, oh my, all this church team, make them uh, leave me. Now, I they come find my people, make we go club, go there, go do one or two things, you know? That's what I was looking for. So, but the next day, everybody was going. My brother insisted I, I could not be the only one in their lodge. I, we all had to, you know, leave for this, for this church program. Long story short, we went for that church program and I got born again. <laughs> Just imagine that. What if I did not go? See, God is merciful, though. Yeah, let me not, let me not, let me not divert. Since we don't have too much time, God is merciful. Thank God I went. You know, I went for that meeting and I got born again. How I even got born again was that I was at the back, 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 back of the church, and while I was there, I was already looking for more. So I had this thing go be now. Make we finish. Make we go there one side. You know, that kind of thing. And Feladroto, yeah, funny enough, was the one who was preaching you know many of you will be wondering ah, fella na pastor yes he's a man of god so fella was preaching and then uh, he was preaching he now made a call towards the end an altar call it was in, in in a house of house on the rock church you know and so i went i came out no before i came out i was on my seat sorry what am i saying i was on my seat and i made a call i'm like oh my people should do and go now but he kept on insisting that there was one more person, that there was one more person that God was moving. Come out, that this is your day, this is your time. This one, that one, blah, 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 and all of that, and all of that. <laughs> Forgive me for using blah, 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 blah. I'm just saying that I was really listening to what he was saying, you know. But he kept on calling and calling and calling and calling and calling. 
then where i was there was just a very firm conviction in my heart that bro drop all these things and follow jesus i did not know that's what it was but i just knew that there was a strong compelling power stronger than my will that was at work that day. and i don't know how i found myself i don't know how i found myself at the front of everybody who had already come out and then he began to pray and he said and he now called the pastor to lead us in the prayer as the pastor held the mic and began to pray i saw a vision in that vision i saw jesus and he came and he laid his hands on me let me not buttress on that you, you don't have to believe this story real don't be under pressure some of you are saying is it true don't let me take out the pressure from you don't you don't have to be <laughs> you don't have to believe so you don't you are, you don't, you are not in you are not pressurized right? you are not compelled to believe my story i'm just telling you what happened i left there and then i became born again so this was me after, after school i had left i was withdrawn from my first school and so i was just there and i was in the house and i began to ask god i started I did not really have anybody that was training me or teaching me or stuff. Wow, I just was shall looking for God. I had a Bible. I was always reading. I didn't understand what I was reading, but I was reading and reading and reading and reading and reading, reading. Until I now saw and heard of a particular a, a particular university, Covenant University. Let me just say the name. Yes, see you. And when I heard of the school, I heard that it was a Christian school and all and all and all that. I mean, it was a good place. No cult, no cult is in there. So they said. I'm not saying that there is. I'm not saying that there is not. I'm just saying that that's what I heard. There's no cultism inside there, you know, <laughs> and all of that. And I just felt in my spirit that God wanted me to be there. My parents didn't even have the money, actually. But um, I just knew I was going to be there. And I told my mom, she said, I'm going to sit down. You come out this school, you come out semi-government school. You want to go up in that, you know? This, this is not the day I will share this story. And I've gone into details, but I don't have that time. We don't have the, that luxury, luxury of that time. Let me cut the story, long story short. So eventually I got into the school by the hand of God and, and I began to pray. Lord, what will you have me do? Because that's the question that many believers ask. And I sense in my spirit, which is the reason why I'm saying this story, that a lot of you listening to me now, you have that same question that you're asking. If you're like that, you're asking in your heart that oh why am i here what am i gonna do let me see by a raise of hand don't be shy there's, there's absolutely nothing to be shy about if nobody has the answers so other being god if you have the answers you would have been god <laughs> but you are not god so you, there's no you need to be shy what will you have me do yeah it's a beautiful thing that you are raising up your hand it's a beautiful thing it means that you are human well, not just that you are human, but that you are asking the right question. What will you have me do? That's the question I began to ask. And I began to ask, and I asked, I asked that question for long, for long, for long, until I heard a preacher preach one day. And he said that when you, were, when you got born again, the Holy Ghost came and tabernacled in your spirit. And yeah, that's good, I know that. And then he now said something and what he said changed my life forever when he said this i did not need a preacher you know for to come and tell me what god will do for me yes i needed them to confirm it but i did not need them to tell me what god will do for me because the first thing he said is that god is a speaking god i said wow so this god can actually talk <laughs> because before i went into this school i was in my room one day and while i was in that room i began to pray and i told god i said god send me to covenant university and if you will send me i will save you i didn't know i was setting up myself <laughs> and immediately i made that prayer my room began to glow with the glory of god this was me as a young believer i did not have any but i was and i grew up in a catholic background so there was zero experience in charismatic ministry or the power or the presence of god it was just dead doctrine that cannot be life. That's where I grew up. <laughs> and then my room began to glow with light. Fast forward back to when I was already in the school, and then I heard the preacher say something that changed my life. He quoted First Corinthians chapter two and verse ten. He said that God has revealed them unto us in His Spirit. He said, "Wow." So God has already revealed my purpose to me. So what do I need to do? 
he said that the spirit searches out all things even the deep things of god see it was that day i knew that my life will never i will never live an assumed life i will never live by chance i will never live by mistake i will never live my life to chance i will never live by assumption why because the spirit searches out all things said so that means and i asked god a question i said so that means you can search out what my life is to be on this earth he said yes <laughs> and i cannot only search it out i will reveal it to you because i have actually revealed it to you it is locked up in your spirit i said wow he said it already that he has revealed them unto us by his spirit that means the, you re, the holy ghost all your you received all your answers <laughs> oh so the lembo rute ke fale ke azi the day you received the holy ghost you received all your answers that's what god told me the day you received my spirit all your answers were given I said, so what do I need to do? He said, learn how to search with my spirit. <laughs> I said, how do I do that? He said, pray in tongues much. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he edifies himself. Part of what happens in edification, this, this, this was my conversation with God. Part of what happens when you are being edified is that you are receiving spiritual knowledge. You are receiving an advantage in the realm of the spirit. You are becoming bigger than that problem or challenge. You are becoming bigger than every limitation around you. You are coming into knowledge. You are learning about yourself. You are learning about the mysteries in me. That's God speaking to me. That's God speaking to me. That was God speaking to me. I said, wow. So I began to pray in tongues in the morning. On my way to class, on my way back from class, one day because of time I could not eat breakfast. And when I could not eat breakfast, I discovered that the prayer was sweeter. So I started to fast. I fasted for 40 days. Until one day, one day, I got back to my room on the 11th of January, 2015. And I, as I lay on the bed, I fell into a trance. In that trance, I was outside of the hall, of the hall, of the hall where I was sleeping. I was outside of there. I was outside. But in my in reality, I was on my bed. But I stood outside in a trance. And it began to rain. It began to rain. It began to rain. And I could feel the raindrops on me. And I looked up. I saw that the cloud had that. And I opened my eyes. I could feel the raindrops on my body. There was not there was no water physically. Why could you know when somebody slapped you? You will remember that slap <laughs> for five minutes. Your face not gonna recover in on time. That kind of thing. That's what happened. Yeah, I could feel the droplets of rain. If you hit your hand now. If you hit your hand now, you will feel that pain on your hand for some time. That's what I, I was experiencing. <laughs> and then I knew that, oh, so now means I have activated the search engine of the Holy Ghost. And now he's beginning to show me stuff. I said, okay, so if I was fasting to two before, now we make it to six. If it was to six, now we make it to ten. We had to come i was just trying to activate the search engine i did not know that that thing i was doing was making me become a prophet one that can peep into the by the search engine of god and tap into ancient antiquity and peep out stuff i did not know i did not know i kept on praying and eventually 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 knowledge intelligence began to come he said he searches out all things all things all things <laughs> and that was the day i knew 
that this God that I serve, that he would not leave me to live my life to chance. I knew I could, I would not live my life to chance anymore. Mm-hmm. I knew that I was never going to live my life by mistake. That I serve a God that knows and shows the future. Yeah. <laughs> and that one, you will do that one as a believer, not, not as a prophet. As a believer. As a believer. That was when I came to the conclusion. The believer that is confused about their life is a lazy believer. Is lazy. If you know how to pray and stay, and you have developed staying power in prayer, and you can leave food, God will speak. Yeah. Because what you are doing by your prayer and your fasting, you are actually not making God speak. You are just aligning yourself to receive that which he has placed inside your spirit. There is an intensity that you need to burn out for some aspects of your life and destiny to be unlocked. I know that you have seen visions and you saw that you will be a great man of God, that you will be a great businessman, that you will be a great something. That thing you saw, I want to announce to you that it's only available at a certain level of intensity. You need to burn. You need to burn. You need to burn. You need to burn. And that was the answer to my question. Until the time came that I would just be in my room, ask questions. Where is so so and so person? <laughs> I already understood that the search engine had been installed in my spirit. So all I had to do is to stay in prayer, and eventually, the answer will come. Yes, it will come. <laughs> Because I have the Holy Ghost. It will come. It will come. It will come. If it does not come, then I should not stop praying. It will come. <laughs> oh! Oh! My life became sweet. Then I will shake somebody on the road. It was at that, as I began to maintain a, a, a burning altar of prayer, fasting, and the word, with obedience, coupled with obedience to God, eventually and I began to know that, oh, you have been called to be a prophet. I said, so where has this call been all this while? He said, it has been locked up in your spirit. But now that you are learning, you have, you have realized that the search engine <laughs> resides inside of you. There was a day I lost the hard drive. I could not find it. And then I remember that, ah, I have the search engine. Dikibia. <laughs> And I can pray in tongues under my breath. If you are beside me, you'll not even know I'm praying. And after I prayed for some time, that night I slept in my dream. I stood up from the bed and I looked at a bag. As I looked at the bag, the hard drive came and was suspended on the air. When I woke up, I checked the bag, I saw the hard drive. <laughs> Aye, 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 te live neke jakafandi, tan to teki akomba. One of those days I was just there. And I've, I'm, see, that's when I stopped having prayer points because I knew that God has more important things to show me than I'm willing to pray about. So let me just learn how to activate the search engine. You know that thing on Google when you just type, I'm feeling lucky, or you just do a random search and it shows you what it likes. I knew that God was wiser than me. So instead of coming to him with the prayer point, I've not married. I'm 30, I'm 25, I never married. Oh, I don't have money. God has other priorities that will benefit me much more. So I will go to, I will approach the search engine without a search request many times. And as I began to burn, you will learn, learn that there is a place of prayer. Eh? And that place of prayer or that point of prayer is more important than your prayer point. When you reach that point of prayer, the search engine will switch on and it will now begin to show you stuff. As he's showing you those things, those are the, what the stuff, this, those, are, those are the things that will now start to shape your prayer point. And you now start knowing because he has begun to help your infirmity. Hi. One of those days I was just engaging the search engine. And as I was engaging, I, I plugged my, my device. As I plugged my device, I was caught up into a trance. That trance was, I was there for maybe five minutes, but in the physical, it was about five milliseconds. <laughs> How long does, does it take to plug your phone? When you carry the cord, carry the phone. Pam, that pam. How long does that pam take? It's not so long. Within that pam, I saw my future. Ooh! 
and I saw I stood on like oh. okay I have permission to share this I stood on a high podium and I saw an endless crowd of people hungry for the fire of God hungry for the fire and the power of God hungry to hear the counsel of God and I stood there and then I heard the search engine <laughs> the now the same engine began to speak so he cannot only show he can also speak and as he spoke he said you shall not see death you shall not see death until you see this day i said okay this was 2015 i said all right <laughs> i said all right yeah take him broke to come up okay take a yaki zuki fala zuki pala We'll call this one lesson one of the school of prophets. The search engine. The search engine. The <laughs> Oh, if only you can keep tongues upon your lips. You know, my problem started the day I was talking to my father and the Lord Apostle Arame in 2015. I said, Daddy, is it I have too many problems? If I start praying about them, I might not I might not end soon. But I don't want those problems to distract me. Can I pray and fast without a prayer point? And he told me, yes, son. I said, okay. No, he said, yes, bro. Courage, you will know. That's how daddy talks. <laughs> he said, yes, bro. <laughs> so I said, okay, now. I began to pray. I said, here we go. I began to pray and fast. Without any... There were curses so in my in my family. There were curses. Oh, I said, people were all kinds of curses. All kinds, all kinds. <laughs> But I put not on the courses. I said there is one that is more important than these courses. If I can latch onto that one, these courses they will break. If I can latch onto that one, money will not be a problem. If I can latch onto that one, power will come. If I can latch onto that one, my future will be settled. If I can latch onto that one, I can deliver my family from this bondage. And so I began to pray. That's all I've known in my life. Prayer and the word. Prayer and the word. Prayer and the word. Prayer and the word. And like the ancient man of God said, I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. I set myself on fire and people come to watch me burn. Watch me burn. And one day I was praying, and as I was praying, I I was not praying for deliverance, not praying for my father's side, my mother's side. No, I was just loving God, and I felt something walk out of me. This was me years ago, walk out of me as it walked out. I said, I knew that that thing that has stopped men in my family can no longer stop me. No, I have overcome. <laughs> Hey, atike ratiko murukutapala. You see, you know a paralyzed person, somebody that cannot walk. That's how you will be if you have not learned how to engage the search engine. You just be a believer that can shout and jump and clap. But until you learn how to engage the Holy Ghost, tangible profiting will not be brought to your life. That's why we have the school of prophets to teach you that there is capacity in your spirit and that's why we're having 10 hours prayer so that we can tap into the vast resources of christ locked up in our spirit and make them tangible <sighs> i feel like praying it was in those days i learned that you actually have a prayer voice this one is not doctrine it's my experience <laughs> That if you pray and fast long enough, you will find your voice in the spirit. When you find that voice, that's when you can glide for two hours, 10 hours, 20 hours. <laughs> There's a voice 
that the holy ghost can quicken in your whole vessel when you journey to the place called prayer there's a place in that realm that is called prayer when you get there you are sucked and enveloped into god he begins to share his burdens with you and he quickens you to call upon his name and you begin to run with an energy that was not supplied by by lucozet boost you begin to run with an energy that was not supplied by an energy drink that's when you learn that there is a technology in god that can make men mount up with wings like the eagles it makes men walk and they don't faint they run and they are not weary it equips your your feet you can over you can overrun the, the chariot of ahab there is quickening in that realm when you get to the place of prayer you now know that time means nothing you just begin to you must be ready to go and travel deep into god oh, yeah <laughs> Akura mansana, akura tapatomba, ita parokos kafala, e parafe pento kofa kapena, vreke telepe ruka, ya kwa kandi, e koko pam pam pa. That realm is real. I tell you, is real. I tell you, is real. I tell you, is real. You know, I began to read. I began to read. I saw in the Bible that. I'm steady in Christ that is far above all principalities and powers. As I began to meditate upon that, you know, on a certain day, I was in a in an Uber moving from one place to another. It was in the morning as I began to speak, just meditating upon that scripture. The Holy Ghost came and spoke and said, Now witches can no longer near you nor touch you. They can no longer near you. I didn't know that there is the legal dimension of our salvation and the organic dimension the legal that you know what has what has what has been wrought for you what christ has given you but the organic is that you will now lay hold on it and that that you profess becomes your reality that's that is that is the organic the vital part of salvation he said from today witches can no longer touch you i said okay so courage you understand this story one time we went to makodi for a conference the house of me i stayed the day i came there they said that oh boy which is now nice food this house I mean, I could not stay in Papa's house because his house was full, you know. <laughs> so I stayed in that house. And that house that I was in, one lady came from nowhere and came to come and sleep. As she closed her eyes to sleep, a witch came and uh, tried to attack her, tried to press her, tried to do all kinds of stuff. The witch was covered in clothes and stuff. I said, ah. she told me after today, say, oh boy, I guess so you be prophet. So see what thing they happen to me. I said, inside the same house? Say yes. On that one came again one morning when i was going for the conference for the morning section she said oh boy that she slept oh that's in her dream she saw witches and they were trying to kill her trying to do stuff trying to i'm calling courage because he can verify this story <laughs> i don't want to call the name of the person's house that i stayed i said eh okay but when me i look back after at the days i've spent in that house i slept like a baby in fact I have not slept that good because in Lagos I have been doing my work everywhere, everywhere, doing all kinds of stuff. But that house was where I slept the most peaceful. And the whole thing was funny to me. I'm like, is it inside the same house? I mean, my sleep is too. Sometimes I was, in fact, I, I almost went very late for the morning sessions <laughs> because the sleep was too sweet. I say in the same house and they are pressing people. <laughs> a point came and i told god i said okay now that i know that me they cannot near me yeah we need to shield all these people now let's shield them so i we had one all night one all night one all night we prayed and the reason why i prayed with them was to help their faith a single declaration could have actually stopped that you know uh, there's a height let's leave that story a single declaration could have stopped it but they are used to all night all night so i said okay let's pray i could cool like prayer so let's pray and then we prayed up prayed up prayed up by like 2 3 a.m i said okay so at this point we have we have shut down the portal they will not enter this house again me i went to go and sleep until i left the house not a single report of witchcraft what happened was that i was just i just read a scripture and 
some time ago and i began to search with the search engine search engine it's called lambano whereby you actually take a scripture and you make it your own <laughs> you make it your own lambano you lay hold you lay hold on it you lay hold on it you lay hold on it when you read a scripture that talks about your salvation you read a scripture that talks about your victory over sickness over death you lay hold on it you lay hold on it you lay hold you lay hold you lay hold you lambano we will not be weak anymore we will not be weak anymore oh no 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 we will not be weak anymore because we will lay hold of all that is in us in christ jesus we will not be weak and the least among us will be as strong as david <laughs> i just saw in a vision and in my vision i saw an idol fall in the house of someone <laughs> and in that vision i saw the idol fall and as it fell it's because you began to lampano as i was speaking and the thing fell it fell and the sign that it has falling is that i saw that there was somebody that has like an eating disorder like an eating disorder in your family and that eating disorder has been done away with by the power of the living god you are a lady you know what i'm talking about is done if you can learn this thing even in my call you know it's one thing to be to know that you are a prophet it's another thing for you to actually walk in it <laughs> because for a long time I, I only knew how to know things in the past or present but i did not know things that were going to happen in the future maybe in a year i only know like three or four things that will happen i, I said no, i said if this is an office then there must be a consistent expression i said okay so i had to start learning how to pray in tongues under my breath two for seven i tell you if you do it long you will hear yourself speak some strange tongues <laughs> Why you hear a man like Theophilus Sunday singing? He's he's not speaking a language. He's not speaking a domao. No. When you stay long enough in that realm, it begins to alter your consciousness. A point will come that your tongue starts sounding like a language consistent with a civilization in the spirit. <laughs> when you hear a man like Doctor Paul and then speaking tongues, you know that one has has eaten this thing. Eating. Um, <laughs> when you hear a man like Apostle Arumel Sai is speaking tongues, you know that this one is not just doing it because they say believers should speak in tongues. He has he has entered something, had touched the spirit of prayer. Rukamba Zwakapa Wakapa Poroton Oscopena Manama Rokoto Kovrekedrikidia Inokoto Kovera Kapa Brakoto Rokoto Kovrekedrikidi beyond Escomemo Escomemo Ea Akua Kafafandiki Ateto Itokoto Korukutuku Bakatandi Espapaloto Escapa Rokopeletua Inakwa Kape Pokotweke Pefe Krekitra Kakotua Kapakatua Iatakapa Akwa Kapa Iakapapa Akwa Tapa Iatapapa Pray, pray, pray. 
akone azokomono komrokoto kaberakata kaburokoto kabelakata kaboya inya kata kaburokoto 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 kapapapapapa apapapakata akrukoto zoto zoto rata rokapakatwa zaka jabala prakata kapatwa ekrokoto things are breaking in your life now o akaponde eskopena parakatwa mbuakata krua ruakatwa akwata patwa askopan takayata Rakata kaburakata kroto ekrakat rakata kapakato agrakata graga draga daga bakato menda inaskopa owa bakato ekefe komia seni eskombe iya kapokom baba kapando brakata kanda sakapata as I'm speaking now as my angel is touching some of you and you're feeling heat on your body can I can I can you can you can you just confirm it in the comment section below owa kando sokemba pale katoa like heat is coming on your body now i'm just seeing him moving from person to person touching 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 he's distributing fire fire so come so that you can burn a tombe in a bond and break it a a cut to a cup of this up on my kitty a cut up on the so cut up a lap a pro a pro a cut trick it a cup on the is what 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 a pro a to a to a cut to a baba cut to a brah someone just does something like scales fall off your eyes now in a cut up a pro a cut a cup and re in great get rock out a lumber a brock out a credit in a man Ekrokot rokos kopa kapa katoa inamanda zakai 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 ai kai tiki tokomba pureke sala pureke sala pureke toskopa hamba eprokoto kwatambe inawakade esko pureke te krata la katoa kapa kapa tekonde eprokoto if you are sick place your hand where the sickness or pain is now brakata ten don don benandas ita poponde I see someone in a vision and what I see I see that there is a demon that comes to torment your mind he gives you nightmares and during the day I'm seeing that your you lose your mind you just begin to think all kinds of stuff and you're not in control control of your thoughts just put your hand on your head <laughs> tonight is your night of deliverance just put your hands on your head and hear me pray that devil is leaving you now zakapanda zakapanda barotokwa aqua Takapomba, nakapoto kuapata ne, iya kapato andereketia. They cannot resist my voice, for I speak with the authority of God. Broka, broka, broka. Pete kieke, kieke, kieke telebede. Every ketela, every keteli bakanda, every katale boroko tuwa kape mamanda, every katale boko tuwa inakamba mbabaleke, babala kateleke, babala kateleke bireke dua. Duga banga, duga kwa katuanda, brakatuanda, swaka baka tuanda, tuata puanda, brakatelebe tua. I release the fire of God all over you. So come beke, skelima nde kovenansi jekali, ratumba tu felen krekinde, terimon zakamba weke ya di dede, idegi ya di gudukumba, aroge de gavaga de jigrukumba ambu, ambruko pama. That one with a stomach pain that has lingered is gone now, which I'm seeing an intestine replaced now, zakwa kapana. Ayakatandua, brakatua, kapanatua, like a twisting intestine. Replace now, heal now. Zakai, zakai, rakata pala, e prakatele ke tua kapepe, e prokoto kapena, excruciating pain in the stomach. Heal now. Azugai, azugai, baraka tua katama, baraka zukwa kapana, akwakanda, e ya solo tonto, rokoto no pompa katani, e rute. I speak from an ascended reality and I speak over everyone listening to me now that is tormented by a devil and whatnot in the name of Jesus Christ. Go! 
Go! Go! Go! Go! In the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, they are leaving you now. You've been tied down for long. Today is the day of your deliverance and the day of your victory. Come out. La Brotopena from that depression out from that oppression and the lord says that it's a new day for you and where you have been buried you come out now that devil lose your hold over that mind now get out lose your hold lose your hold lose your hold now in the name of god go. ah, i'm seeing a lady there's a lady there a terminal illness it comes and goes and comes and goes and when it comes it renders much discomfort oh if there be a god in heaven i command that devil now get out get out look her and let her go in the name of jesus christ <laughs> someone that had someone i think it's your mother or i'm seeing a lady in your family that has been bedridden the lord says go and lay hands on her now for the spell has been broken yeah the spell has been broken the spell has been broken yes 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 the spell of the enemy has been broken and there is victory for your family i release the blessing of god all over you i release the power of god all over your vessel I said tonight, have prophetic dreams, see visions, and hear like a prophet. In the name of Jesus, there's some of you, some of you have you, you've been having problem with your sleep for a while. Comment. I want to pray for you, and I'm asking you to comment so you know that the Lord knows you and sees you. I will pray now. That's that that condition is about to end forever. You're having problems with your sleep. Comment now. I have. I only have. I only have. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Just comment quickly, 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 quickly. Have problems with your sleep. Just stretch out, stretch, stretch forth your hands. Just lift up your hands where you, wherever you are. Just lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for Olowe. Thank you for Becca. Thank you for Edesiri and um, I don't know what's this name. And um, Precious. Thank you for all your four children that have lifted up their hands wherever they are. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I say that your hand rests. Your hand rests upon them. You revealed so that you can redeem. Actually, what I saw in the vision was I saw you. I saw you having a very good night's sleep tonight. I saw you having a very a brilliant good night's sleep. And the only time that you will wake up is when the Lord wakes you up. Because when you wake up, you will feel the presence of God. But you will have a good night's sleep. That's what I saw. And I asked God, why am I seeing good night's sleep? He said, because some people here have not had a good night's sleep in a long time. So release that blessing over them and curse that devil. So I curse that devil that has withheld sleep from you. And I say sleep because the Lord gives you rest. Sleep. Sleep sleep in the name of jesus christ terminal illnesses gone forever in the name of jesus issues with the belly with the organs healed forever anyone that needs a replaced organ replaced forever with a walking aid do away with it and walk forever walk now walk now <clears throat> walk now walk now walk now healed 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 in the name of jesus healed 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 receive receive your miracle receive your miracle receive your miracle in the name of jesus christ receive your miracle 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 now 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 oh i remember in 2020 my father in the lord apostle arame he laid hands on me and said i'm giving unto you the miraculous go raise the dead heal the sick open blind eyes 
on 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 stop deaf ears open deaf ears let the lame walk let the blind see let the deaf hear and so i release that same unction over you tonight and i say you that needs a miracle receive your miracle and begin to rejoice now in the name of jesus thank you holy ghost <laughs> and the lord says begin to rejoice for one of you there shall be a perfection in the next seven within now and the next seven days begin to rejoice begin to rejoice begin to rejoice the lord is settling one of you that has an issue with going to school abroad it's seeming like an, it's an impossible task but you know that it's the lord that has sent you the lord says i'm making a way where there seems to be no way and the wilderness shall become a fruitful vine says the spirit of the lord thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost one of you i'm seeing an angel playing like a harp like a harp for you in the spirit i'm asking god what does this mean he said that because he's bringing peace to your mind peace to your heart peace to your mind and peace to your heart yes the lord has been trying to speak to you for a while but there has been distractions by situations peace to your mind peace to your heart peace to your mind peace to your heart in the name of jesus honorable you are healed forever in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name in the name of jesus christ thank you holy ghost we are going to continue this um school of prophets next week i promise you you don't want to miss it all right <clears throat> we're going to look at the spirit of prophecy we're going to look at the gift of prophecy and the office of the prophet and i'm going to teach you how to operate in the gift of prophecy you know it can be taught because that spirit is in you the holy ghost <laughs> i said there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit I mean, if you have the same, if you have the same spirit, if you have the spirit of God, you can operate in the diversity of gifts. That's another way to see it. If you have the spirit of God, you can operate in diverse gifts, not just one. God will not put you and say, "We oh, are yeah, only you. Take this one." No. If you have the spirit of God, you can operate in diverse gifts. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let your hand rest on everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming.